Morning guys, I'm going to make a uh, short video because some of you keep asking for a parts list. Well, a parts list for my air conditioning install is not going to work for everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my entire system, show you what I did. And then based off of that, you can make your own kit or do it however you want. And it all depends on where you want to mount your compressor and uh, what temperature you live in. Those are the two determining factors. But the first thing you want to do is you want to try and find an R9976 compressor or an R9976-4 compressor. These are on eBay. Uh, I just checked on eBay recently and I saw a couple of them for 350 bucks shipped. So um, I know they exist. They're out there. Um, this is the one that you want to look for. Anything else, the gallons per minute is too high. So if it's like a dash five, six, seven, or eight, the gallons per minute are going to be too high. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So here's a uh, compressor capacity chart. And what I'm talking about here is you see this red line that denotes a dash six. And then the green one is a dash seven. So what you're basically looking for is a dash three, dash four, dash five. The most common ones I've seen are the one that I have, which is a nine, nine, seven, six, dash zero, which is the very first revision of the compressor they ever made. And then a uh, dash four. Those are the two that normally come up on eBay. And like I said, they're right around 200 to 350, maybe 400 bucks for the compressor. But um, if you look at the capacity chart here, you've got a uh, hydraulic oil flow gallons per minute. Um, if we're traveling along at 60 miles per hour, I already showed you guys calculations using the um, 3 to 17 gallons per minute pump. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, but if we're traveling along at 60 miles per hour and the flow is divided by 2, we're flowing about uh, 12 11 and a half to 12 gallons per minute. Divide that by two and you end up with six gallons per minute. That puts the BTU capacity of that compressor uh, above 20,000, probably, you know, 22.5. So right around the capacity it should be at. Um, aside from that, the only other thing you need, you need is one of these kits. So you can find these on eBay too. I've seen them go for as little as 750 bucks shipped for the entire kit with everything you need aside from that compressor. So um, you order one of these kits. It's going to come with all your hoses. Um, you're going to have to order an extra hose kit for your refrigerant lines depending on where you place your compressor. Um, if some of you mount it to the back of your cab, you might get away with this. And then your hydraulic lines going to the compressor would be the things that would be long. Um, but it all depends on where you want to mount your compressor. So, um, let me take you outside and walk you through the system. Alright guys, as you can see, I got a, uh, condenser and a dryer up there. These are out of the Humvee kit. And all your hoses. Your refrigerant lines come down the back of the cab go under the cab and then down to uh, the compressor I'll show you that here in a minute but first um, I'm out of the control box right there as you can see the evap is on the back wall there's actually plenty of room in the cab for one of these it's especially if you're only driving with you know four two to four people it's there's plenty of room and then I just made some penetrations. These are all included in my build series. But I'm making this video separate so you guys can kind of see what the workings of the system are. Let me tilt the cab and show you the compressor setup, which is probably what you're most interested in. Okay, recently... recently uh, went through the system and simplified it as much as I possibly could to eliminate any fittings and pressure relief valves that were unnecessary. So let me kind of walk you through what we have here. So that pump right there is a three to 17 gallons per minute pump, okay? 
the reservoir feeds that that comes down and it goes into a cartridge flow divider so this flows 16 gallons per minute inlet and then eight gallons per minute max on each um, separate flow right there so from there one line goes to the steering to the steering box and then the other line goes into a three-way um, it's a three-way solenoid valve is what it's called and it's 24 volts and so what that does is one side goes right back to and they actually go through the cooler here there's a cooler set up and then that goes to the reservoir so uh, normally when you're driving along without the air conditioning off this just goes right back to the reservoir to the cooling and then the, to the cooler and then the reservoir I should say so when you turn the air conditioning on it sends a compressor signal this magnetic solenoid will close this path off and then open this one up and that will go into the hydraulic side of the motor on the AC compressor this motor will spin um, that actually goes through a before it goes to the motor it goes through this pressure relief valve you've got to have one of these set to 2500 psi because the kick on pressure spikes up a little bit and then it'll flow through the motor no problem so you have to have a pressure relief valve on this motor otherwise you can blow stuff apart lesson learned on that one but um, so in between the hydraulic motor and the compressor is a heat sink this is just here to connect these two together and it provides a way for the um, hydraulic fluid temps not to transfer over to the compressor motor there's just a uh, a little shaft that sticks out in here and then a cog that goes into this compressor so um, when you uh, I guess how, how can I say this here let me try to word this better um, when you're driving down the road and you have airflow going through the vehicle um, on about a 95 degree day your hydraulic fluid temperatures going through this very small cooler and back into the reservoir are going to be about 140 degrees uh, I tested it with a meat thermometer driving down the road and I kept checking the temperatures in the reservoir I put it in place of the uh, dipstick um, if you're sitting still and you have the cab tilted down and you have your idle ramped up to like 1500 rpm which will spin this at about you know three to four gallons per minute to keep the air conditioning going on a hot day your hydraulic fluid temperatures are going to jump up to about 160 170 degrees now it's recommended to try and keep your temperatures uh, for your hydraulic fluid 150 degrees or below um, that's what I read on the internet I don't know if that applies to power steering and whatnot because power steering temperatures run upwards of 200 degrees sometimes pretty much the same temperature that coolant runs through the motor but um, the only other thing I could think of upgrading which I'm not gonna do is this cooler if you bought a large cooler with two fans on it your hydraulic fluid temperatures would probably sit about 20 degrees above ambient that's a, a guess that I'm stating through experience that I've had with coolers and radiators and whatnot so that's the only other thing I could think of upgrading if you're gonna do this system is get a bigger cooler this is just a Maradine uh, heater it's got a little 12 volt fan that's connected to the compressor signal so the fan only turns on when the compressor turns on which I'm gonna change so that there's a switch on the dash which probably won't make that much of a difference it's the hydraulic fluid is gonna get hot one way or another because it's doing a lot of work um, 
let me think if there's any anything else that I can go over. I'm going to include a bunch of links in the description. I can't guarantee you that all of those products are still going to be there at those links, but it's something for you to reference so you can kind of see what it is you're after. Um, if you have any other questions that I didn't cover in this video, stick them down in the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. Keep in mind that my time is limited um, as far as responding to a lot of stuff on the YouTube comments, but I do my best to try and get back to you if it's something that's not covered in the video. Uh, the only other thing you're going to need is a bunch of hydraulic fittings and lines. And that's something you probably have to figure out on your own based on where you put your compressor. But uh, for the basic part, you're going to need some uh, gates, 5 eighths, power steering, return line. I know you're going to need that for sure. And then you're going to need some um, half inch hydraulic lines. I just upgraded everything to half inch. It's easier because the flow rate jumps up to like 18 gallons per minute when you go to the half inch stuff. So that's basically all I did. Um, God, I wish there was more I could include on this, but there's so many variables when you put one of these systems in that I just, I don't know what else to include in the video. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, I've proven this system now. I've proven that it can work on this. Um, I'm going to have another, fingers crossed, I'm going to have another uh, video coming up here shortly that um, shows you guys how to set up a belt driven compressor and an economical way to do it without getting hammered too hard by some of the people that have these components. So that's going to be another uh, setup I'm going to do. I'm going to show you guys that it's possible to do it on a budget and uh, you don't need to get taken advantage of and whatnot. But I've proven this system. It works. We've driven around on a 95 degree day and it'll keep the cab, you know, between 50 and 60 degrees. So I know that the system is working and uh, I'm pretty confident that it could be recreated by somebody else who is mechanically inclined. The other thing to uh, keep in mind is you want to make sure that you insulate your hoses as they go through the engine bay because it does get a little warm in there. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything else that I could share with you that would be helpful for this air conditioning system. So I'm going to upload this video. Uh, like I said, I'll put as many links as I can down in the description. Take a look at that. See if uh, some of those items will meet your needs. And once again, I'm going to be doing... Like I said, fingers crossed, hopefully all the components I can find. I have a, a couple leads on them, so I'm just going to scrounge around and see if I can use a small budget to find some of the parts that are missing. I basically just need a pulley. Um, I already found the compressor that actually goes with this Humvee kit. I ordered it. It was a couple hundred bucks shipped. And... Um, to basically mount the compressor that's the other thing I have to do which is doesn't look like it's gonna be a big deal it looks like I could fab something up or whatever the case may be but anyhow uh, if you like this video as always give me a thumbs up if you're not subscribed yet subscribe to the channel uh, I try to provide you with a lot of information that might be helpful and some of the things that you uh, guys are working on if you have one of these trucks but other than that uh, take care and I'll catch you guys next time see you later bye bye